Hey internet, I'm getting ready to move tomorrow, so naturally I decided to make a video instead. By the time you see this, I will have already moved. This is my last night here at Woodhouse. Oh, hi Index. I needed to fold clothes and like get ready to move, so I figured what better time to sit down and just talk to you about a few things that I've had in my brain. So my last video was a video about my bad brain and shock and surprise. It's still bad, but the last five months have been a journey of like figuring it out and learning how to manage it and how to be functional with it because it's not a thing that I think is gonna be going away anytime soon. So a thing I kinda wanted to talk about today is like what I've been doing, like what are the things that have helped over the past five months. So I guess full on disclaimer, this is a video about mental health. Nothing about it's gonna be particularly dark or difficult or touchy, I don't think. I'm gonna talk about a bunch of stuff that applies to me. People's brains are different and people are dealing with different things. I'm specifically going through some stuff that I don't think a lot of people are going through. Some of these might not be applicable. So yeah, I guess just be aware that stuff that works for me might not work for everyone. Cat, you were <laughs> just going for it with the parent. So first and foremost, about like five or six months ago, I hit like a major crisis point. And that was the thing that finally forced me to look at more serious interventions. There wasn't really another option. It kind of got to this place where I was like, okay, I can't deal with what's going on here. I need some external help. And that thing was therapy. I've been talking to a lot of people who haven't ever gone to therapy, and I know that this was a thing for me, but my general feeling was like, therapy's not gonna tell me anything that I don't already know. I psychoanalyze like crazy. I'm always thinking about what my brain is doing and what's going on. How is talking to someone gonna do anything? How is it gonna reveal something that I don't already know exists? And I think that's a massive misconception. At least for me, the point of therapy is not to like reveal some hidden depth of something that I don't know exists. It's not about telling me what my problems are. It's about managing those. It's about building toolboxes of skills so that when I am faced with my issues, I have things that I can do to help mediate them. And I think it's important to note that nothing's going to help you if you're not open to being helped. So if you're sitting there and going through a lot, but you're not ready to work to get better, if you're not at that point, it doesn't matter if you go to therapy or not. Things aren't going to help you unless you are open to them. So I think that's the number one thing for me. It's like, you need to be open to trying new things and trying new strategies and doing things that you haven't thought of before or haven't wanted to do before, because if you're not, nothing's gonna change. So for me, it was getting to that crisis point. That was the thing that was like, okay, I need to do something different. I need to get under control. Something has to change and I'm willing to do whatever I need to do to get that. So what have I learned in therapy so far? For the past five months, I've been developing these things and bringing together a bunch of different types of strategies. You gonna come back up? Okay. Yeah, I thought so. I felt like I went into therapy having a pretty good understanding of what my issues were, but like knowing that I have issues versus having the words to describe them is a different thing. And so the first thing is that I learned to recognize cognitive distortions, and I talked about that in the previous videos. I started like getting these red flags when I would feel things happening and being able to stop and say, no, this is a distortion, this is not actually reality. And so spending a lot of time stopping and saying, is that accurate? Is that true? That's been a huge part of being able to manage my thoughts. One of the most massive strategies that I have been utilizing for several months now is distraction. And I think when you first hear about this, and I know when I first heard about this, I was like, no, this is super unhealthy because I don't want to just like step away from my problems. I don't want to like not look at them or deal with them. That sounds inherently bad. In talking with my therapist got the chance to like feel better about that because when I'm in a heightened state of emotion or anxiousness or just like being really upset, that's not helpful. So like trying to go through and process things in that state, it's not going to be successful. And so a really important thing that I've learned is when I am overstimulated and overly emotional that I need to step away. I need to read a book or watch a TV show or listen to music and take some time to calm down before I can go in and try to process those things and that's okay. The next thing 
is understanding your whole health situation because your brain isn't separate from your body and a lot of times the things that you're eating and doing and the patterns that you're in they can affect your mental health. So things like not getting enough sleep and not drinking enough water and not eating the right things. And for people like me, hormonal cycles are huge. This is a thing that my therapist and I talked about really early on, but I went to the doctor, like the regular GP, and I got like a full series of tests done and looked at the different things that you know, I have issues with. I have chronic migraines and I have intense hormonal mood shifts. So one of the things that we decided to do was put me on hormonal birth control as a way to potentially regulate those intense mood shifts that happen during certain times in the menstrual cycle. That kind of ties in with this next part, which is communicating with your therapist. When something isn't working for me or when I need something, I've said something and my therapist is very good at checking in and making sure that we're doing a thing that works. The first day that I went to therapy, I went right in and I said, this is my goal, like this is what I'm looking for. Thinking of you and your therapist as a team where you need to be communicating and you need to be able to trust each other and everyone needs to have all of the information. In addition to communicating with the therapist, I found that it's really important for me to communicate with people around me, knowing my limitations in social situations and knowing what my needs are. If there are people that are close to you who are going to be confronted with some of the things that you're going through, it's good to maybe like put out a warning or say like, hey, sometimes this happens and this is what I need if you're you know, willing and able to help me with this. And realizing your limits is kind of part of that. Recently, I've gotten invited to a thing and it's just not a thing I can handle at that time. And so being able to communicate that and feeling safe and comfortable to do that and also being honest with yourself about what you can and can't handle. One thing that I'm working on right now is this concept of radical acceptance. So when things are going wrong, I have a habit of just like immediately trying to jump into fix it mode and like make everything better and not accepting that that's the way that things are. And if I'm unhappy, I, I can't accept that this thing is happening that is making me unhappy. And in the past couple months, I've lost a lot of things. There are certain things that have changed in ways that I can't control. Other people have made choices that have affected me and I can't do anything about them. And sometimes a person chooses a thing and you have to be like, this sucks, but that's the way that it is. Learning to accept the situation that you are in and moving forward, understanding that that's the situation is so simple of a concept, but for me at least is really hard in practice. And so this radical acceptance of like, okay, we're not working from where I want to be. We're not working from this fictional place. We are working from right now. And right now, this is the situation. And the final thing I want to talk about is making sure to do things for you. You can see accomplishments and you can feel good about yourself and you can see how you are developing and see value in yourself as a person. That's a thing that I was having a lot of trouble with earlier, a couple months ago, just like, finding value in myself alone, like as a human, <laughs> because a lot of my issues have to deal with interpersonal stuff. And so when I felt like that stuff wasn't going well, I was having trouble finding value. And so one of the things that I did during October was I did a thing called Arttober, which basically was me making art every day of the month. And some of the stuff I really liked and some of the stuff, eh, I feel like it could have been better. But in general, I felt like I was developing a skill for myself. It was a thing that I was doing for myself. I took time out of my day that specifically was for this thing and I could see the progress that I could I was making. It took me an embarrassingly long time to finally start making time for myself and like being okay with being alone and being okay with not having things to do with other people. Once I was able to do that, once I was able to find this thing that I was excited about doing on my own, suddenly evenings where I didn't have anything to do weren't failures. It was, oh my gosh, I have this time to practice this thing that I really want to get better at. I'm at a place now with things where I feel less unstable. I feel like I'm able to manage things. I feel like for the most part, stuff is still coming up. I still have these unhealthy thought patterns. They're not going anywhere. It's still 
just as frequent and just as brutal sometimes as it was at the beginning, but I've been able to more quickly deal with them based on these strategies. And so that, I think, is the benefit to therapy, the benefit to intervention. You aren't necessarily fixing yourself. You're not gonna necessarily be all better in a couple months. You know, the brain you've got is the brain that you've got, and sometimes it's not perfect. And so you gotta figure out how to work around it. That's what I'm doing. That's what I'm trying to figure out. If you have any strategies for what you've been doing, tips and tricks for people to try, let me know down in the comments. I should probably get back to packing up my room so that when I get the U-Haul tomorrow, I have things to put into it. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see y'all later.